everyone. Welcome to Lizzie's Little Library and the Newberry Project. I'm reading each of the Newberry Medal winners in chronological order, reviewing the individual stories, and then noting any trends I see as the series progresses. Today's book is the 2005 winner called Kira Kira by Cynthia Catahota. This is the author's first middle grade book. Katie is our five-year-old narrator. She introduces us to the word Kira Kira, which means glittering. Her older sister Lynn taught it to her, and Katie clearly idolizes her sister. The family lives in Iowa in the early 1950s, but after their Asian grocery store closes, they move to Georgia, where Dad's brother has promised to get them jobs at a chicken hatchery. In the very first couple chapters, already I very much liked Katie's voice and her narration. Plus, this book is physically smaller than a lot of the other Newberries, and the font seems larger, so kids would probably like those two factors. Plus, the cover is striking, especially when the book is flat, so the picture spans both the front and back covers. It's one of my favorite book covers so far for a Newberry. Several years pass, with Katie looking up to Lynn. A younger brother named Samson is born, and the girls help raise him. Lynn, as she gets older, is getting closer to her friends, which leaves Katie feeling out and lonely at times. Things are not great for the family. Mom and Dad work so much that the family never has time together. Plus, Lynn hasn't been feeling well. She's tired a lot, and Katie says she looks green. Lynn does not return to school in the fall. Everyone keeps saying it's anemia. Mom, and especially Dad, work a lot of overtime, and eventually they're able to get a mortgage on a house. However, Lynn is diagnosed with lymphoma, and the medical bills are a huge expense. Without ruining the ending, Katie starts to realize what is important to her family and to herself. The end. I liked this book. I really liked the beginning. As it went on, however, I didn't love it. Rather than a story about Katie reading this from an adult perspective, I saw it more as a story about the inattainability of the American dream. No matter how much the parents worked, they never had enough, and that was really sad and frustrating. Just as a couple examples, one time when the kids didn't have school, they couldn't afford anyone to watch the kids, so mom had to take Katie and Samson to work with her, and they had to stay in the car in the parking lot for the entire day. Another time, Katie mentions that mom's job is so stringent that she can't even take a break and she has to wear what Katie calls a pad in case she needs to urinate. And that's just heartbreaking that mom can't even use the toilet at work. So that was a real downer of a story right there. Katie, I mean, she was a good character. She was not a great character, and I'm honestly not sure how many kids would like this book. There definitely were parts that were kind of boring. For example, there was a lot of discussion about mom's work forming a union, which I, I don't think kids are super interested in unionization, if they even understand it. There were some parts that were definitely sad, but it didn't provoke a deep emotional response. This book was pleasant enough, but I can't really recommend it to anyone. It had a really strong start, but it didn't pick up from that point. One of the things that Katie really struggled with at school was identifying themes in text. And I thought that was illustrative of she's struggling to find the theme. Whereas the theme in this book, at least to me, was super obvious. I thought it the theme of this was intended to be about finding the beauty or about finding the Kira Kira in life, no matter how difficult things may be. That was fine. As an adult reader, I, yes, sure, that was the theme. I also read it as a story of family economics and the unrealistic nature of the American dream. And that was a really sad interpretation to this book. There were three honor books this year. Two were fiction, and there's another photo biography by Russell Friedman. The next winner is called Criss Cross by Lynn Ray Perkins. I have not previously read it until this series. I'll get that one posted soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.